So um, hi, everybody. Um, it's a fantastic crowd here today, and I'd like to wel welcome you all to this webinar and um, the third in our series of assisted pieces for the Creative Climate Action Fund. So this is all about assisting you with filling in your application form. So any questions you might have, um, as Kate's already said, um, please use the Q&A function and we'll get to those questions throughout the hour. If we don't get to them, or if there's anything that we can't answer immediately, we will have the frequently asked questions document on submit.com updated within the next seven days to provide you with those answers. Okay, you can obviously also email us at the email address provided in the briefing document so please continue to do that if you need to as well and as I said we will update the document to ensure that everyone has all the information at hand. Um, what we're going to start with now is Kate's going to run through uh, how to use submit.com and how to go through the ap application process. She's going to go through a, a Spark application just because it's slightly shorter but obviously the Ignite application is the same just more questions so there's just more boxes to fill in that's all. So we We'll start with that and then once we finish that we can address any questions people have at that stage. Thank you very much. Thanks Kate. Thanks Adele. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, please do let us know if you have any trouble seeing that or hearing me at any point. Um, so you'll see here that I have gone to um, creativeireland.submit.com um, and this is where all of the Creative Ireland applications live for a whole range of different programs. Um, and I'm going to go through, um, as Adele said, a Spark application just to run through some of the technical pieces of how to complete this online for anyone who hasn't done it before. So in order to make an application, um, you will have to create an account with um, the creativeirelandsubmit.com page. The first thing you'll see here, and this is the same for the Ignite strand, is you have a brief overview of the, um, the fund, but also um, access to any of the resources that we have provided to date. So there's a recording of the online briefing um, when the fund was launched or the presentation slides. Um, and there is also the guidelines for applica applicants, the FAQs, which are updated on a somewhat regular basis. So if you've read them, it's always no harm to just check in and see if there's any new additional um, questions or answers that have come in there. Additional resources, which are links to various climate and creativity resources around Ireland and around Europe that may be useful to people when they're preparing their application. An evaluation toolkit, which I'll uh, talk to slightly later, and then a downloadable application form, um, which is just something that you can print out if you're working with a team often it's useful to do this offline but just to remember that this is not um, something that can be submitted you have to go through the submit.com platform so if you click uh, apply you'll be asked to either create an account or log into an account um, I have an account already so I will log in uh, when you create an account for the first time, um, it just sends a, an email to your whatever email you've provided. So the first thing it'll ask you is to confirm that you've read the briefing note, and the, which is the guidelines for applicants before making an application. And um, this can be downloaded, like I said, on the front page or here again. And it's essential that you read that, understand the different criteria and eligibility criteria and um, how the fund works and how the two strands work. So we'll click, click yes to that and move on. All of the questions are uh, in this side panel here and you can hop between them. Um, so some of the questions are required and you won't be able to uh, submit the application without having done them. Some of them are numeric only and I'll go through those. Um, so again, this asks you to just confirm that you are um, applying to the right strand uh, Spark is for the smaller grants between 20 and 50,000 euros. If you're applying for the Ignite strand, you need to go back to the beginning and uh, apply via a different form. So we're just confirming yes that I'm applying to that. Um, this is all very straightforward. It'll ask you for the title of your project. Um, and I'll just go through these very quickly to demonstrate how this is used. 
A brief description of the project. This is um, a high level summary, think of it as something that might be included in a press release, an elevator pitch for the, for the project. You'll be asked for much more detail further down and there's a word limit on some of these um, smaller, smaller um, kind of questions here. So we'll uh, move on quickly. Um, here we are asking, and it's the same for both applications, how much funding you are seeking from the Climate Action Fund. You'll be asked to outline this in more detail in a budget further down the application, but this is essentially the, the amount of money that you, you need from Creative Ireland to run the project. Um, Adele will speak to this a bit later. We're not asking if however much you request in funding, if you're successful, is the amount that you'll be given. So while this can be revised at some, you know, to a certain extent later on, we're asking for it to be pretty accurate at this stage. So in this case, I'll be asking for 40,000 euros and we move on. The contact name, contact email, um, et cetera, for this uh, in this section, this is the contact in relation to the application. So please make sure that it is a real human rather than info at, you know, Creative Ireland or whatever your organization is. This will be used um, by Creative Ireland to contact you with regards to clarifications for the application. Um, if we need any different additional information, if we need to send you documentation. So just make sure that this is an individual and a contact set of contact details that will be monitored um, and that can act you know, if we need if we need to contact you, that there will be someone on the other end of that. So, um, and that goes the same for the email address there. Um, the contact number is the same if we need to call you. Um, and again, please make sure that's an actual phone number rather than um, a kind of a general number. And the contact address. So this is for um, the contract purposes. And um, again, this needs to be a real address. This can be an address of an organization or an individual. Um, and when you type in um, the address, it'll come up so that we have something accurate. Again, the lead organization, we'll, um, you'll be able to outline the project members, but whoever is taking the responsibility for the financial management of the project um, should go in here. So um, in this case, I'll put State of Ireland, obviously your project lead organization can't be State of Ireland, but um, again, just to be clear about who is taking that responsibility for your project. In this section, and this is the same for both applications, um, Spark and Ignite, we're asking you to outline the different project members. Um, so this is the name of the individual or the organization, the role on the project, that can be project manager, um, climate expert, lead artist, community engagement officer, however, whatever the makeup of your project is, um, just describe that there. And again, a contact email and an address um, so that we just have a kind of a full stakeholder list for your project. So moving on then to the project details. Um, this section asks you to outline what your project is addressing, what theme it's addressing. And we are very aware that a lot of the projects are very wide ranging in terms of their scope. And um, there is guidance in the application guidelines around what we consider to be effective projects um, from the experience of first round. And a lot of that will, is projects that have a real focus. However, um, it's up to you to outline um, what the focus of your project is. For the purposes of this, we're ask, asking that you kind of keep it to a minimum of three. Um, and if for some reason it's not captured under these themes, that's fine. You can choose other and then um, it'll ask you to describe what that means. So in this case, I might just push, you know, community or however, if you think your, uh, your project's not captured in the other, the other kind of theme areas. Um, the full project description here, this is an upper word limit of 1500 words. And this is where we're asking for a, um, a really in-depth um, description of your project and it should, um, address those issues there in the bullet points. So the creative and cultural medium, the outputs or the deliverables that you're going to, you know, what, what is the result of your project, how it addresses the theme set out in the brief and what you hope to achieve um, 
with regards to your audience and um, addressing those themes as well. So this is quite an important section. Um, and this is, you know, this is the real kind of pitch for your project. If you have um, supporting documents, they're not necessary. Um, but if you have supporting documents that can describe or illustrate the project, they can be uploaded here. Um, there is a limit per file and any large video files, we would suggest that you attach them as a link, um, either as a link here or YouTube or Vimeo or however you're storing it, rather than uploading very large uh, video files. Um, the primary location of activities is important. This is different to the um, say the contract address that we asked for earlier and this is where the activity or the project will actually take place it doesn't have to be in the same county or area as the, the lead organization but we do want to know kind of geographically where you're planning to to carry out this project and um, if it's nationwide that's absolutely fine um, just specify it there and if the location is unknown um, we'd also ask just that's fine that can be clarified in a another section of the application. Um, again, this is um, a way of helping us kind of assess the different spread of projects that are being applied for. Um, this is to indicate the creative practice or art form. Um, there's a very long list here. If you feel that it's not um, captured in this list or if as many projects have done in uh, the first iteration of the fund are doing community um, kind of design approach whereby you'll decide on that later on and um, you can click other and again you'll be asked to outline what that means so um, just so that we're clear that you are clear as a project um, manager or project initiator what your approach will be here we're looking for the timeline of the project. Um, the Spark projects are a year long, while the Ignite are two years. We obviously recognise that uh, things change. COVID uh, made that particularly clear. But we are looking for a general idea of how long the project will take, um, key events and um, deadlines, and that um, helps us look at you know how realistic your budget is, but also what the year might look like across the, the whole spread of the fund as well. Target audience, uh, particularly important, of course, this uh, whole point of the fund is that it is um, engaging with communities around Ireland and um, as part of the Shared Island project as well. So clearly identify who you're targeting um, in your project and um, you know if they're communities of interest, all of that is very, very relevant here. Um, Adele will speak to this a bit, little bit later. The shared island component is a new element of the fund this year. It's for projects that are either working with partners uh, in the north of Ireland or um, anywhere across the UK, or that their project may be focused in the Republic of Ireland, but has a component in one of those locations. So outline if you think your project currently has a confirmed kind of shared aisle component or if you have a planned one um, and Adele will speak to that a little bit later. The lead applicant experience and the experience of the partners and people involved in the project. This is a short enough section for the uh, Spark Fund, 200 words per partner if you're applying for Ignite. This is quite a detailed section of the application um, and something that uh, you'll have to be able to demonstrate the experience um, both in delivering a project, but also financial management, delivering a creative project, a community project, etc. It's a little bit shorter for the smaller amount of funding, but it's still uh, essential that we know that the people involved in your project have the capacity to deliver what you're planning. Um, the project budget, um, you download a template, um, which will ask you to outline the budget of your project. So um, when you click this button, We'll open project template and I'll just uh, stop the share so I can show you what that looks like. So um, your budget has to balance. That's very important. So your income needs to be the same as your expenditure. Um, and this should 
outline again the funding sought, which you were asked for at the beginning, any other funding you're getting, and you add lines in here as appropriate, same with your expenditure, and then that is re-uploaded to, um, to the application. Um, describe how you manage the budget. All of this is very straightforward. Like I said, um, in the Ignite application, these sections are a lot longer because the amount of money being awarded is a lot higher. Um, but the process in terms of filling it out is all the same. And um, details of any other support, whether it be um, other areas of government funding, local authority funding, et cetera, um, outline that there. So when you get to the end of all this, you'll be asked if you want to submit your application. I haven't filled in the required questions. At the very end, once all your questions are required, you uh, are, are completed, you'll be asked to um, sign a declaration that says that you acknowledge all the information that you've provided is correct, and then you submit it and that's it. You will get an email then to the contact, not to the contact email you've supplied here, but to the email that you've registered the account with, um, confirming that you have submitted the application. Um, if at some point, you know, between now and the deadline, you can save and quit these applications and come back to them to work at a later date. If you do submit the application and for some reason before the deadline, you want to change something within it, once it's submitted, that's final, but you can contact Creative Ireland um, and explain why you want to change the application. Reopen it and um, we have the capacity to do that. Otherwise you can delete the application and start again. But once the fund has closed on the 13th of March at 5 p.m., um, you won't be able to go back in and edit um, applications, delete them, et cetera. So um, we just encourage everybody to try and get them in at least a day in advance, just to make sure that you are happy with everything that's there and that there's no technical difficulties. And um, yep, that, that's pretty much it in terms of uh, filling out the application form. It, like I said, it's pretty straightforward, but it's worth getting familiar with the platform um, and not leaving it to the last minute. Okay, so we've had quite a number of questions come in in the last little while. And um, as I said earlier, if we don't get to them all, and even the ones we do get to, we'll make sure and update the Frequently Asked Questions document with the answers to these questions. So if you feel that you need more information on it, we can absolutely provide that. So starting with ones regarding, I think a lot of them are seen to be regarding finances and the, the breakdown of admin support and things like that. Um, what we're looking for is a fully thought out budget. Um, and there, there are quite a lot of questions about kind of what, what the remuneration might be for project management, admin staff, all of that sort of thing. Particularly in the Ignite strand, the reason we're looking for a lead partner with this experience is because that that organization or lead organization they understand what those costs are you know and and they have have we we are requiring that lead applicant to have that experience if you check the brief on page um eight we're very very clear on that the, given the scale of the funding available in ignite in particular lead applicants will need to demonstrate a track record of financial administration and have necessary experience and management skills required to deliver complex large scale projects so we are looking for very you know well equipped organizations who are used to delivering on these level of projects and as a result they should understand what that costing is we understand that there might be changes and that there will be changes around the budget lines and that will happen as part of the project but what we have found in in previous funds is that people fundamentally underestimate how much these things cost and what they what they then find is they end up taking away from the budget that they had for the delivery of the project in order to provide support for this so we would prefer to see a well thought out budget line that explains exactly what people will need in terms of project management with regard to something like project management what we don't want to see is just 20,000 euros for project management. What does that look like? Is that one day a week for the next two years? Is it two days a week for the next two years? What what exactly does that mean? You know, because it's it's 
or you know is it a daily rate is it a percentage of somebody's salary what exactly does that look like and that is up to you to decide and um, again we are looking for organizations with this experience at that level when it comes to spark the applications for the, the smaller um grant amounts we we understand that you know people don't necessarily or may or may not have the level of experience to fully anticipate those costs but when it with ignite like you know there's there's up to a quarter of a million available on this fund we want to be really clear that people need to be able to you know see what's required ahead of time and while we can move things around as the project goes on we really do want a fully thought out um, budget from the outset on these ones. We don't have a template because we are expecting that the organizations with that experience will be able to provide the information that they know because they've, they've the experience of running these type of projects. Also, every project is individual. Every project is going to require a different level of management, depending on what the project is, depending on the number of partners involved. So it's it's very important that it's unique to your project and that you have really thought it out with all of the, the project partners. Um, we have a question here about series of events and other activities which have separate costing so things like marketing public outreach publicity materials yes absolutely have them as itemized items on your budget please do include them and ensure that you are including as much of the the possible costs as is possible and um, what we found um and we talked about that this at the last webinar was um people very much underestimated the amount of money that they would spend on project management and PR related costs or communication related costs. So do think about that, think about what that looks like, think about who might provide it, particularly with the larger amount of, of funding. Um, does that, you know, look like you having to you know, hire somebody? Have you got the capacity within your organization? How much time of that person, how much of that person's time will this take? So, you know, again, is it um, one day a week this person is going to spend on that? So that's a fifth of their salary is being spent on that. So it's it's very much up to you to have a look at that. But um, we are also kind of, you know, again, there's a question on kind of the admin and a proportion of people's salary or, you know, the full annual salary. It's unlikely that someone you know, is spending the entirety of their time on this project. Um, but there may be, and in which case that's fine if they are. But for most people involved in the project, it's probably going to be a percentage of a salary if they're involved in the organization, if they're employed by the organization. And if they're not, it may be a daily rate. It may be an agreement that you have. Um, they, they could be a contractor. Um, so it is it is important that those costs are laid out ahead of time. Um, I have a question then about um, community collective of independent practitioners, our steering group members regarded as supporters, partners. It's it's up to you. It's what role do you see them having in your project? You know, um, it might be that you designate one person from the steering committee to be nominated as the named um representative on as a on under the project partners um we're not limiting the number of project partners however it is important that they are actively involved if they're being named as a project partner and um, we have had in the past where people have named organizations that weren't necessarily very involved um so it is important that if they are being named that they are involved to some degree in the project um, let me see. Okay, so payment of funding. Okay, so let me just talk about the payment of funding in general. So we will have, um, once the funding is awarded, and as Kate mentioned earlier, um, in this fund, and I know it can be different in other, you know, forms of grant funding, if you apply for 50,000 and you're successful, you will receive 50,000. It's not It's not going to be a percentage. We won't come back to you and say, we need to take away some of it. It will be the full amount, which is why we want really well taught out budget lines to ensure that we can see exactly how you plan on managing this project. Once the recipients, the successful su recipients have been awarded, the Creative Ireland program will sit down with each project lead and their team and 
decide an agreement and um, we will sign a service level agreement between the department and the the project lead this um will go up on submit.com today there will be a draft version of that or it's not a draft a, a, a templated version of that um service level agreement on submit.com today so you can see what it would be that you will be signing um once we get to that point um in terms of paying out funding we can agree with you what suits your organization or you best so is it that you need it to be x number of times a year or is it one payment once a year or is it less than that and that's absolutely fine we're very flexible about how and how often we pay you that's that's entirely up to you um it is vouched expenditure so and i there've been a number of questions on that you do need to prove that you've spent the money before you can draw it down um however we we understand that with small organizations and and people who are working on their own this can be a little bit more difficult but we can we can facilitate that by having more frequent drawdowns that we can ensure that you have what you need um once once we can vouch for that expenditure we um let's let me see okay So, you know, again, we we are we will try to be as, as helpful as we can in terms of the funding element. Um we are very open to having conversations with people about how we can support them in that, but the vouched expenditure element is is in place and we do need to ensure that we we meet that requirement. Um but as I said, we can we can support you um to ensure that you can you can run the the project success successfully. Um we have a couple of questions around prod, um, organizations and artists being listed on multiple applications. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's no problem with people being involved in a number of applications. How they, however, they can only be the lead applicant on one project. So you might have an organization that's involved in a number of, of projects, you know, giving support, providing, you know, some support, um, but are the lead applicant on one project. So while we can accept as many, there's no limit on the amount of applications you can be part of, but there is a limit on the number of applicants, applications that you can be the lead applicant on. You can only be the lead on one. So let me see, is there anything else we have? Looking to put an application involved in multiple partners. Um, So the um just there's a question here with regard to um the the how we might view people being forming part of a number of applications that won't be taken into account at all. So don't don't let that you know dissuade you from applying under a number of different um organizations or a number of different applications. Um we're I haven't um we're completely fine with um you being part of a number of applications we understand the spaces you know it's a, quite a niche space there's a number of organizations that would be of benefit to lots of different projects and we're open to them being part of lots of different applications so that's absolutely fine in the last fund we had a number of artists involved in two or three projects and and one or two organizations involved in two or three projects so th there's absolutely no problem with regard to that at all um let me see um so there, there's quite um you know time spent on the project and can funding cover absolutely you know you know you and that that's really important to us that you budget for your time as well that you know that you are being paid to run the project that you're not you know if you were awarded funding from that point onwards you should be remunerated for the amount of time you spend on it but that that decision on how much that remuneration is and how much that time is is yours and it, we need to know about it ahead of the project so we are absolutely if you are spending four days on planning then yes there's no problem submitting an invoice as part of the project for your time for those four days as long as it's been outlined in the budget ahead of the project if that makes sense um we need to spend money and then provide transcripts. So there are questions about taking out a loan um, from a financer as an expense exceeds their current savings as permitted. Um, it's 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 not something that we would you know would object to in any 
by any stretch of anyone's imagination. There is, if that suits you, by all means. But as I said, we can facilitate more frequent drawdowns to ensure that you have cash flow to to um to to meet what you, what you need. And again, as I said, don't forget you need to include your time. So how you how you plan that and and how you draw down, you know, should go towards helping you um cover those costs. Um complete a one year complete a one year project in strand two funding. Okay, no. So um strand two funding, the the Ignite project, it is across um from 2023 to 2025. It's not a one year at 250,000 in the one year. The, the, the point of that strand is for that longer term, more embedded type project that we can give them time to embed it, to work on behavior change. One of the big um, pieces of um, evaluation that came out of the last fund was the need for more time to help with um, behavior change. So that was the decision behind the longer period of time. So no, we're not going to be looking for projects that are of a shorter duration for Ignite. Um, okay, so there are a couple of questions around shared island. Um, so could we have collaboration with an organization in England only, or we need to have a collaboration with Northern Ireland and England? So with the um, shared island funding, it is both north, south and east, west. So while the, the pre predominantly the partnerships will probably be based in between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, the, the, the Department of the Taoiseach is also opening, is open to the Republic of Ireland with the country, the, the, the remaining countries of the United Kingdom. Um, so the England, Wales and Scotland very much so could form part of partnerships as well. So that that would be absolutely fine. Um, so is the grant paid up front? The organisation need to draw down. So it is is on a draw. It's a drawdown basis. We will agree a drawdown schedule with you. Um, but you you it is vouched expenditure. So you submit receipts and and payments or, you know, if you have spent three months working on the you know, kind of the development of it, it might be the salary of those people for three months and you can draw that down and then you're, you know, working on the next stage of the project. Um, there, there isn't a percentage. Um, it's it's a case of what you agree with us when you're signing the, um, the, the agreement. We will work with each individual project to ensure that they're enabled to deliver, deliver the project to the best of their ability. Um, and can an organization with a status of incorporated association be the lead applicant for strand two? I will have to check that one, to be honest. Um, I'm not 100% sure um, of, of the, the legalities around it, but I will ensure that that answer is in the, the FAQ by next week. Okay. Um, so I have two questions. So is the lead, if the lead applicant, uh, if the lead is an academic at a university, can funding be used to cover um, a teaching? So is in that case, is that where um, the organize, um, the, 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 the lecture I assume is, is having to have someone cover the, the cost of their classes? Um, yes, if, if that's necessary for them to be part of the project, then that, that will be fine. Um, is an NGO or civil society organization, is it an NGO or civil, that has to manage the funds or could it be possible to have a partner, but rather have the university manage the budget? Yeah, we would, we'd have no problem with the university being the manager of a budget, but in that case, the university would have to be the lead partner. So um, there's absolutely no problem in universities being lead partners at all. And in fact, they they quite successfully managed them in the last fund as well. So that's absolutely fine. Um, when's the timeline for the two-year Ignite project from when to when? So we're hoping to announce the fund recipients by um, by the summer of this year. And then it's um, the, the projects will run until the end of 2025. So we envisage kind of wrap up kind of the last half of 2025 in terms of evaluation processes and and the likes. So it is um it it it's it's a little over two years they would have and in, in, in and if they can get off the ground quite quickly, it could be up to two and a half years they would have on that one. Um if a public sector organization is the lead partner, 
is grant funding for third parties limited by public sector procurement rules that depends um let's see it depends on how the ideally they would be part of the you know um ideally what we would want is that they will be part of the partnership from the beginning so again it does depend on the rules within your organization um but we would we would prefer if they were part of the partnership but i know i know some people some organizations do have to limit to procurement rules and um that that is up to the organization themselves but we will um we can work with you to to figure out um how to enable um enable the third parties but as i said if you if they could be part of the partnership at the beginning that would be ideal um we would like to apply for strand two and want our project to start in 2023 and be ongoing for the next five years at the timeline okay for this fund no unfortunately it's not and um, the the projects are starting this year um and for ignite they will finish by 2025 and we need an evaluation completed by the end of 2025. So um, if if you are looking for a more longer term project, you would want to have set outcomes outlined in your project proposal to end in 2025. And then potentially that it could be taken further by another funder at another stage to go beyond that. But the the duration is not is 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 by, by the for Ignite is the end of 2025. Um, so how to manage your, okay, an, share an example um, to the questions on the forum of how to manage the budget. So um, again, I suppose, as I outlined earlier, what we're looking here for here is that people actually know how to do this. And um, we are, you know, it's, it's quite a lot of state funding. We are looking to ensure that people can manage their budget themselves. Um, so that, that the, 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 the budget itself should show that you have experience in doing this. We are much more willing to work with people at the, um, in the um, Spark strand on assisting with that, but particularly in the Ignite strand, if you're applying for the amount of money at the upper limit of Ignite, we are looking to ensure that you can manage that budget. Okay. Um, anyone know? So the to save the the Q and A text, we will we will absolutely ensure that everything is in the the FAQ document. So don't panic about trying to save everything. We'll make sure everything's included afterwards. So don't worry about that. Um, whoever manages so to clarify, whoever manages the budget must be the lead applicant. Yes, yeah, they they absolutely do need to be. Um, so it's it's we're we're insisting on them having the expertise to do that. So um, whatever that looks like for you, you'll need to um, ensure that that that's, um, that that can happen. So as somebody's asking about copy of the Q and A, don't worry, we will have them in the the frequently asked questions. So that's absolutely fine. Sorry, I'm just going back up to the top of this because I think more questions have come in off the top now. Um, I think we answered that one already. Um, okay. So Kate, can you see any other ones that I haven't got to yet? Um, don't think so. Um, we can also, if people want, I can unmute um, people if they... Yeah, absolutely. If anyone wants to ask questions here, directly, that would be absolutely fine as well. Sometimes it might be easier at this point now that we've kind of explained certain amounts of things. Um, so there is a question on downloadable versions of the applications forms. We have um, in the in the briefing document, the questions are in there and the word count is included, but um, but the, the application is on submit.com. So we, we don't. And I know there have been questions about forwarding a hard copy of it. Um, we're not using a hard copy system. It, it is being um, applied for via submit.com. Um, 
it's there's a question on is it okay for the lead to be in full-time employment in the public sector yeah we've no problem with public sector organizations being part of of the application process that's absolutely fine um there there are many local authorities who were involved in the last round and um, lots of universities who were involved in the last round so th there's no issue with that um how your organization manages the the time in some cases what they do is they they kind of almost use that you know say that the, if if a person is being dedicated to it that might be that organization's contribution to it and it can be kind of a benefit in kind or that they charge the project you know kind of 10 percent of that person's salary and that's again that's for a conversation for the the lead organization to have as to how they want to manage that in some cases they want to be part of it and contribute to it in other cases they don't have the capacity to do that and need to budget for it and that's absolutely fine um, there's a question there about if you could buy a farm with the funds. Um, I think yeah. that would probably be beyond the timeline of the... It's absolutely beyond the timeline and also it's not a capital fund. So I'm afraid with that, we definitely can't do that. Um, project... Um, Guard when to save... Okay, if project is successful, can it be patent to save divide the money that will bring in the end? So um, I'm, I'm not quite 100% sure. There's a question about patents, I think. Um, it's, it's um, I, I suppose, you know, it's, it's, it's public funding. Um, the the idea is it's it's behavioural change, so it's unlikely that you're looking at profits um in terms of the project, um, and you know it, again it's it's the, the 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 service level agreement will outline intellectual property and things like that. So just to to maybe go through that and see if you've any additional questions on that. Does the org? It doesn't matter if the organisation is a profit making business. No, it doesn't actually. Um. Um, as long as it's well accounted for and the the ideals of the project match the briefing document, no, it doesn't matter. Um, does the Spark Fund reopen annually? No, it doesn't. So this is the fund for the next three years. Um, this is only the second time this fund has been ran. So the first one ran from 2021 to 2022. This time around, it's it's a three year time span. Um, from the start of the, the launch to the end of, of the, the projects themselves. So that's not going to reopen annually. So that, you know, the at the moment, it, this is it until the end of 2025. Um, can you apply for both funds? Yes, you can, no problem. Um, I know you mentioned that you have to, have to spend money before you can claim the grant. Um, small business and couldn't manage that. So possible to draw down certain percentage beforehand. Um, at the moment, we don't have that capacity, unfortunately. We don't have sanction to allow for that. So um, we can have a conversation about how you might best manage that um, and what elements of the project might need to go ahead. But no, at the moment, it does have to be, um, we do need to work through budget expenditure. Um, can two artists from the North and South of Ireland develop and deliver projects individuals or the need an institution as a partner um, application in both? So the lead partner in both Ignite and um, Spark need to be based in the Republic of Ireland. In the case of Spark, the lead applicant can be an individual artist. But in the case of Ignite, the bigger funding um, strand, it has to be an organisation. So in either an organization can be the lead in either um, strand. So in both Spark and Ignite, it can be an organization, but we are allowing individual artists to be the lead um, applicant in Spark, but not in Ignite. We do need an organization in that case. And the organization that is the lead organization needs to be your base in the Republic of Ireland. So um, if an individual is applying for Ignite, can it, or do you need to have a business structure? So no, an individual cannot apply for Ignite. It needs to have, um, it, it needs an organization behind it. Um, so to clarify, whoever managed, yep, yeah, we've gone through that. There's one on in-kind contributions versus financial. Okay. Um, From Devon Carr. Oh, I see that now. So do um how do in-kind contributions factor into the project budget and that can be considered expenses that the fund can draw down on? So um in-kind can be so in the case earlier on, as I mentioned, in some cases an organization may wish to 
you know, donate the time of one of their staff members to the project, in which case that would be their, you know, the income of the project is that person's, you know, salary. Um, but yes, um, you can, like, you could also, there can also be that they are giving that time and that they need to, to use, you know, claim that back as an expense. That's absolutely fine as well. Um, can um, lead application? No, you have, you can only be a lead application application regardless of whether it's spark or ignite you can only be a lead on one so outcomes impacts and evaluations are there guidelines on what information should be presented we have an evaluation toolkit and um, the one that was used in the last one is in the document section of submit.com so you can have a look at that the way it currently stands that's what was given to the last round of of recipients that will be updated this time round however when it comes to the Ignite projects, what might be worth considering, particularly for those projects, is would your project benefit from independent evaluation? And in that case, you should budget for that. And the reason that we would highly recommend that is that while it's fantastic to evaluate your own project, from a longevity point of view, oftentimes if you have an independent evaluation of something um, from other funds that we've ran, people have found it much easier to get um, corporate funding, other government funding when they have an independent valuation piece from the previous project. So we would highly recommend that people consider that as an as an element that they could use as part of their um as part of their budget um and um as part of the overall project. It's it's very uh, it's very much a benefit to the project. One of the projects this time round had an embedded um evaluator in the project um from an external organization and it really was a benefit to them. So we would recommend that. Um, so you can apply for both strands. You can be a partner on, on an application for both strands, but you can only be a lead applicant on one project, whether it's Ignite or Spark. Um, can any of the partners be located outside of Ireland or the UK? Yes, absolutely. You can have international um, applicants. I know um, some of the people last week at the event in, in the concert hall were talking about some European partners. Um, that's that will be absolutely fine um if our international partners because in a lot of cases the expertise may not um be available in this country and and if they're not and you can get international partners fantastic that would be brilliant is it important that the project can sustain beyond 2025 with the company continuing the funding so it's in the ignite projects we are looking for you to envisage the longevity or the sustainability of the project. Um, we don't need to know now how that funding will happen, but it would it we would like to see a plan that would look beyond 2025, yes. Um it doesn't necessarily have to be the, the you know, um the, the Creative Ireland program, the government may or may not be able to continue the funding and and you know this is the funding that's available for this and and this is all we have sanctioned for at the moment. However, um, we would like to see what it might look like if it was to be sustained beyond 2025. Um, do you need quotes for the application for um, as the for the independent evaluator? Um, yes, we would. If you could just have some sort of an idea as to what that might look like, um, there there are there are lots of people who who are engaged in evaluation processes, and will be able to provide you with that. Um, can the same, I think I've answered this one already, can the same organization be lead applicant on both strand one and strand two application? No, you can't. Um, knowing the spark idea that I aim to propose involves a community engagement. So the community um, mentioned um, be involved from, yes, they absolutely should be involved. And um, that's the whole, um, we would like the, you know, if they can be at all involved in the, conceptual phase that would be fantastic you know behavioral change doesn't happen through one event or one workshop or one you know intervention it happens through a longer period of time um do we need to pay back the finance at any stage um I, i'm unsure what you mean by pay back the finance 
So if, if the grant funding is awarded, um, it's awarded. If, if you're referring to a, if you'd taken out a loan to help finance it, then obviously the loan would have to be repaid as part of the grant funding. Um, but but that's, that wouldn't be from the Creative Ireland programme. The Creative Ireland programme, if you're awarded 100,000 across the, the duration of the grant, you will be provided with 100,000 euros. Um, you don't need to pay that back. Um, are there any other questions that I'm missing? Sorry, I'm... I think that's done. Um, if anyone does have any additional questions and you want to raise your hand, please do, just so we get the last couple as we're finishing. Um, okay. I'm going to unmute some people and we'll just okay. go through them uh, quickly. Right. So uh, first Perfect. we've got Rupert Butler. Hi, Rupert. Hi there. Um, thank you for all of this. Very helpful. Not at um, all. Just wondering, is there an expectation of a proportion of funding that Creative Ireland will give compared to other sources? Um, no, no, we don't. We don't. And we don't need it to be match funded. It can be entirely sourced from the Creative Ireland programme funding. We don't need you don't need to provide match funding. It's just in some cases people have it. So we, we, we'd we like to know what the breakdown is, but there's no expectation of any percentages or anything like that. Great. Thank you. Not at all. You're more than welcome. Uh, Louise Fitzgerald. Hi, Louise. Hi, thanks so much uh, for today. I uh, just had a follow up question in relation to yep. the question I had if Ignite was only to run for a year, if that was OK, like from yep. August 2023. Um, and I got the response, no essential, we would expect it to run for the full timeline given. So I'm just wondering, is that the full timeline of 23 to 25? Uh, Ignite is 23 to 25. Yeah, it, ha it has to run that long. It does. Even, yeah. even if you applied for kind of the lower end, like 100, 150. Yes. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a longer term investment. It's across the, the two years at least, because okay. that's that's what, you know, if, if you're looking for the shorter term, then then we would recommend applying for the Spark um, funding for that shorter term initiative. OK, great. Thank you very much. All right. No problem. I think it's it's worth saying, I suppose, just that the like research development and the evaluation is within that. Yes. Um, period as well. Right. So. We're not yeah. expecting that projects are running events for two solid years, um, but that, you know, if you're if with that level of funding, that there's an extensive kind of period on either side as well that we would expect in terms of evaluation, research, etc. Uh-huh. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. Um, so we've got Sarah F. Hi, Sarah. Yes, hi there. Thanks a million for today. Really, Not at all. Very, very, very helpful. Not um, at all. I just wanted to ask you, uh, in terms of your own um, application, the number of applications that come in, do yeah. you tend to look at them all and go, right, we've got many more applicants than we have funding for, which is usually mm -hmm. the case. Um, is uh, um, And do you kind of do a light spread of, of your funding to make sure you cover as many people as possible? Or do you actually fund a project based on its integrity in terms of your grading um, so so I said we, we are having we are going to have international evaluators in so there will be evaluators from this the department of of culture from the department of the environment and here in in the republic of ireland but there will also be international evaluators that are very experienced in this area we are looking for the top quality projects um, so we are we are looking for the projects that can provide us with behavioral change and with research to that effect. Um, so it, it will be on, you know, quality applications versus kind of you know, trying to scatter gun across the country. We don't have a, an approach as to, you know, we need X number of projects in X many areas. Um, the Creative Ireland program funds each local authority across the country and and that allows us to have a spread across the country in terms of funding from the Creative Ireland program. This is quite bespoke and you know we are we are looking for a more kind of in-depth project that is of high quality for this for this fund if that's okay. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Sorry, we've got Natasha. Hi, Natasha. Hi. Um, 
So my question is, uh, there's an artist I would like to get involved, but he lives in the UK. So would the budget cover ex travel expenses and accommodation? Would that be considered okay? It would absolutely be fine, as long as you cost them from the beginning. And like, yes, we completely understand that things will change, like, you know, the cost of living in the, the, the between year one and year two of the last fund. Um, change dramatically but yes we would need to see that that would be form part of your budget and we understand that that might shift a little bit but yes that would be a very legitimate cost of of involving that artist and um, for those of you who know the um, the Lynch and Farriga project um from the last fund the two artists involved in that project are from Finland so you know it's um we're we're absolutely open to international artists being involved as well thank you you're very welcome Um, there's a question there around waiting schedule for awards of grant. Oh, so we are looking at, so we are closing the applications on the 13th of March. It will probably be the summer before we're able to announce them because we will have to, you know, there's an evaluation process. There will probably be a couple of rounds of an evaluation process given the the um, the scale of, of the, the, the number of applications we're expecting. Um, and um, it, it will be kind of based on, on when the ministers are ready to go ahead with the announcement. Um, so we would we would hope to have people ready to start by autumn of of this year at the latest and and take it from there any other questions will there be a pitch session for the companies we may be asking some applicants to speak to us and give yeah. us more detail around their applications but mm -hmm. um there's not a set um kind of pitching yeah. session for this the the submit.com application is really the best foot forward opportunity for all applicants yeah so really can you think through what you're putting on it and remember you know we we need to see everything well thought out so you know your budget lines how you plan on on implementing the project who the partners are really put some thought into that process now because that's the point at which you know the the assessors will be able to look and go okay the problem is if we do get to a point where we need to call people in that will be after you know a shortlisting stage has already happened so you may have already been you know kind of shortlisted out if you haven't given us all the information you need to ahead of that process we're not exactly sure at the moment wh what that will look like but um you know it's going to be very much dependent on the number of applications we get any other questions? Um, I think that might be it. And we're just coming up to two o'clock as well. So um, we will be putting together a document with all of the questions and answers on this. Um, if you have any further questions, um, the email address uh, is on the submit.com, creativeireland.submit.com. Um, and there, there's a specific email address for this fund, so um, you can email them into us there. And as Adele said, we'll be updating the Q and A's, or the rather the the FAQs. But we will send around the specific questions from this um, as well to all of the registered participants. And um, this is our last um, briefing um, for the fund, but that does not mean we are going away. So, like I said, there is contact details there. Um, if you need assistance with the application form itself or any elements or clarifications, we are here from now until March 13th. So um, please just reach out if there's anything that's unclear. Yeah, and please do um, spend time with the briefing document. An awful lot of time and effort was put into making sure that it was as comprehensive as we could possibly make it. Um, so do engage with it, do, you know, kind of ensure that you've fully absorbed all parts of it before you complete the application form. The, the submit.com does require you to tick that you have fully read it. So just be sure that you have done that before you tick that box. Um, but as Kate said, we're, we're open to any questions at any point between now and the 13th of March. And please let us know if we can do anything to help you. And just to say as well, this webinar is being recorded, so we'll also um, have this available on the submit.com page if people want to look, watch it back as well. Um, so thank you very much, everybody, and we look forward to getting your applications. Thank you. Thanks very much. Take care.